Shout out to my dealers, <laughs> aka the squad. <laughs> you please put that in there. First, I was trying to write a record that would please everyone, which, you know, ironically wouldn't please me because it wouldn't be true to myself if I was cutting myself down. And then, so I, like, I wrote an album like that in a year and I was like, yeah, it's finished. It's great because everyone I played it to liked it, but I didn't like it. It was really boring and just like, it was, yeah, it sucked. And then I went the other way and did the opposite. I wanted to like reinvent music. I got way too highbrow about the whole thing. I was like this mad scientist, like recording everything and like every synth had to be like a sound I created myself. And I was just overthinking everything. And then, um, yeah, it was like two years later, I ended up with the record, which it sounds dumb, but it, the, the theme ended up being that it was just honest. Just like straight up like a diary, I guess, just like a collection of songs. It was like, this is how I feel about that. This is how I felt about that. And there's not really a message in the album apart from just being introspective. But yeah, a lot of it's just like analysis, like sitting with how you feel. Yeah. It's not like I feel like this, therefore I should do that. It's more like I feel like this. Which, I mean, the title Built on Glass, that's, that's one of the main references for the title is glass. This like weird idea that when you go to a gallery and you see something framed, that is art just because it's framed by this pane of glass. And that was, we were talking about just before, like that was this weird thing with me was that I'm basically just talking about my life, which is this mundane thing. It's no more interesting than anyone else's life. Um, could be even more boring than someone else's life. But because I put it in album format, it becomes this product. Compromise. People are constantly trying to compromise musical integrity. Everyone around me wants me to change things. They want me to shorten tracks or radio edits or take out swear words. I didn't put F word in a song because I thought it was cool. I put it in there because it was accurately depicting what I was trying to say personally. So when you start limiting what's, what's shown to the audience or the public, because it is personal, you are limiting yourself. So you're editing yourself, which means you're changing yourself to fit what other people expect from you. Fuck that. You know what I mean? So that's the hardest thing. And I'm like, I'm questioning whether or not I want to, you don't know this, but whether I even want to keep doing this forever, to be honest, because it's just been like lame. And I don't know, get a tray? Yeah, do something. Yeah, something, something real. I didn't really like electronic music till I finished school. And then um, I got dumped by my girlfriend when I was 18. And I was really messed up and I just took drugs for like two years straight. And all I did was like hang out in nightclubs and work at nightclubs. And um, that like reprogrammed my brain to start liking electronic music. So I listened, that was like, what, 07, like Ed Banger crew we were in, like Busy P. Yeah, Digitalism. Like when that Justice record came out, um, I was like, what is this? Never. Ne yeah, just like at this brick wall of noise. I'd never heard anything like it, but it was so infectious. It was like, pfft. but yeah, I, I was at the Park Life in Melbourne, like 07 or something. And it was like Busy P, Goose, Digitalism, Justice. I like, I had like a bag full of googs and the face, the floor was melting. What did I learn from Harley? Harley, work ethic. That dude just like churns tunes out. And um, sometimes you can get lost in your own world and kind of bang your head against a wall. Um, but yeah, Harley always comes to it with like a concept, like, okay, let's do a song where there's no drums in the chorus or, you know, like this, which sounds like such like a simple idea, but it can, it can make it so much easier when you have a direction like that than like, I'm going to make a song, you know? And then like play this gig and like one of my equipment like broke or something. It was just like, but then, the show went really well and the crowd was really supportive and then yeah but um bonobo was just like big thanks to chet faker like on stage and i was just like i had to like take myself outside for a bit because i was sort of getting a little bit and then they played that so the last track on his record oh, i've forgotten the title of it but it's a beautiful track and they like there was like the last song in the encore and i was just like i had to like go outside i try and go for a run every day oh, really? yeah otherwise i would flip out and have deeper moments because it all just gets a bit much.
And I keep a diary as well. I've been keeping it for ages. So I'm gonna read back. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I was reading one the other day, like just before. It's like, oh, I did a cover of No Diggity. My friends seem to like it. Like so, <laughs> so innocent. <laughs> I cannot dream enough when you're gone.